Another day, another wrecked Mercedes. All right, that one's not wrecked. The one back there is. So today we're gonna try to get this thing started. Got a key for it. It's an E-Class, it's a 550, and it looks like it's a 2009 E550. It's a 212 chassis, rear wheel drive. I'm sure the battery's dead, that's why I brought a jump box over, and it is stinky in here. Why'd I get in? Why did I do this? All right, well, the key turns. Battery's dead. Ew. All right, we're gonna just ignore all that, and we're gonna see if we can get this thing to start. Yeah, it's wrecked. Did it hit any of the vitals? That's what I need to know. There's some bent stuff, some broken stuff. Ah, uh, we don't need that. All this unnecessary, at least for engine operation. I see some broken connector thing down here. What is this? Oh, that looks important. Um, uh, what does that go to? Oh, it's a broken cam sensor. All right, we'll have to go get one of those. Uh, but I really want to know if this thing will crank first. I don't want to put a cam sensor on an engine that's locked up. Not that this is locked up or anything, but... Let's try the jump pack. See, give it the old 12 volts. Ooh, it's clicking and stuff. Uh, here, clicking. Oh, I think this reads. Uh, clock is upset. Check coolant level. I don't need to do that. I just want to hear it start for a second. It is not not doing anything. So that's not a cam sensor problem. That's something else. I wonder. The screen is not working. That's also good. Oh, there. Oh, great song. I gotta turn that off. Alright, so it looks like all the dash lights are lit up. It just doesn't want to crank. I don't know why. There's a glove box with stuff in it. I don't see anything that great. Oh, I wonder what's in the trunk. I like to look for clues. I don't know how to pop the trunk unless... Will this do it? Ooh, I heard something. Let's go look. Did that work? Oh, that worked. Oh, hey, there's a bumper in here. And it reeks worse than the inside and looks like a dehumidifier without a tank on it. Uh, yeah, we're just gonna... That. So I pulled the cover off the front SAM, which is a signal acquisition module. Mercedes have these and I checked all the fuses part that are part of the uh, charging system and there are three fuses and they're all good. So uh, now we're gonna check the power at them. I've got my power probe. Let's see, you've got... Okay. And then 25 is... All right, so we're okay here. And uh, now we need to find the relay. The next step, we're gonna pull the starter relay. And we're gonna take the cover off of it. We are going to become the relay. Okay, so I've taken the cover off of the relay. And we're going to actuate the relay like this. So first, I have to reconnect the jump box. making bad sounds. I think we need to put a cam sensor on it. Just doing the old, uh, the old twist. All right, let's go get a cam sensor. We're here, right there. I'm gonna go pull the cam sensor off of that, put it on this motor. I've got the cam sensor. It's not really a cam sensor. It's part of the variable valve timing system. 
to replace that, I need to uh, get this stuff out of the way. And to get the stuff out of the way, I'm gonna use this. This will get the job done. So I use this thing again to pull the radiator condenser stack. Now look at all that room. Hold one's out, put the new to it one back in. I guess I could get that out of the way. At least that's not broken. And then the easy one, I mean the hard, I always save the hardest one for, for last. That way it feels like the project comes to a screeching halt. Yeah, it's uh, perfect. That's on. We're back together. Our box is back on. Now we just need to be the starter relay. Oh, it runs better. It's gonna have a leak right there. You can hear that pump. Let's see what the inside looks like. I don't want to run it too long since it's not gonna have coolant in it. I usually like flashing, it's got misfire codes. I wonder why it's running with misfire codes. We should find out. Okay, so I pulled codes up. Looks like it's got cylinder one, four, six, and seven misfire, which are on the passenger side, the front and rear, and then the middle two on the driver's side. I think I'm gonna pull a coil out uh of the easiest to access and see if there's any water in there this thing probably had the hood open might have gotten rained in it could be some water in the uh in the, in the coil valley so that's uh let's do that but first before we do any of that we're just going to clear the codes and fix it that way you know mechanic hey it's fixed all right let's go be the uh let's go be the starter relay again running. That feels pretty smooth. Oh, the light's not on. Is it happy? Did I fix it? Oh, it's still misfiring. Yeah, let's get to trip some codes again. What I did is I cleared all the codes and then without trying to start the engine, I scanned for codes again and it gave me these two codes. Right intake camshaft hall sensor short circuit to positive or open. And yeah, it's got two codes for that. One for intake, one for exhaust. So let's go look at uh, the wiring diagram and see what's common between the two. Pull the wiring diagram up and it looks like between the exhaust cam solenoid and the intake cam solenoid, there is a wire, red with a gray, terminal two to terminal two. So we need to do a continuity test here. And if we don't have continuity, we need to figure out where the brake is and repair it. So I've got my terminal extenders in kind of cut the harness back a little bit and we're going to do a continuity test between terminal two on both the cam and intake solenoids if it's got continuity the problem is somewhere else okay so we have continuity so that's good now we're going to try both sides to ground well one side to ground since they both have continuity all right no continuity to ground so that's that's good and then we're going to go to the power no continuity to power either okay all right now that we know we have continuity on the red with gray between both exhaust and intake cam solenoids we need to see where else that goes and so let's follow this one and that goes up to the intake cam sensor and it also goes to it's this one 
here, I think. I don't know what I'm doing. But I looked earlier and it goes to terminal three on both the intake and exhaust cam sensor. So we're gonna do continuity test to those. And then if that passes, let's follow 27. Let's go to the next wiring diagram. 27 there. And that goes to the airflow meter, the mass airflow sensor. So that means, well, that would explain the code that we got for that. So we got a code for the airflow meter, airflow sensor, and everything else that this wire has in common. Let's go do some continuity tests. All right, for some more continuity tests. Now we're gonna go between the cam solenoid and the cam sensor. It's all that same circuit. All right, we have continuity there. And we'll test the other one. Where are you? Here. Okay, well, we have continuity there. So all of these four parts of the system have continuity. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to jump to the mass airflow sensor since that is part of that circuit as well. Duty. We sure do. And I think one of the terminals on these coils should have that same continuity as well. Terminal one. All right, so this part of this circuit seems to function okay. And if I had tested any of these locations to the ground, it would have been the same as testing this one here. Same goes to power. So I think we're okay. Now we need to look at the rest of that circuit. Well, I have exhausted this circuit, at least with that one wire. Everything's good to the DME from both cam sensors to the DME connector. Everything looks good. So let's go look at the wiring diagram and see if we can see something else. We follow this red and gray wire this way. It goes to this junction here. Part of this junction here goes to this red and blue wire. Let's follow that. To here, fuse 23. Right there. And according to the diagram, this is fuse 23. And it's blown. So, got ahead and got an extra fuse. Put this new fuse in. We're gonna plug everything back in and see what happens. So we've got power on. I, I wanna make sure it didn't just pop this fuse. So we're gonna pull that fuse back out. And it is not popped. We set that back in there. And we're gonna see if this thing starts. Unhappy stuff in the belt system, but it's running on all eight cylinders. A fuse! I just started there. I know, I know, but I look for the crash damage. That's what I'm used to, not pop fuses. Yeah! Cool, so it's a good engine. Car too low, pull over. I, it's it, I, I'm in a parking lot. All right, well, I don't want to run it too long without coolant in it. But it seems to be running pretty good. All that for a fuse. But sometimes you overthink it. And, uh, well, I, I definitely overthought it. You know, I thought I checked all the fuses, but I guess I was wrong. Plus, now look. I can start it with the key. I don't have to be the relay. Now, it could be that this fuse popped during testing because I did have some key on, engine off testing with this and maybe I accidentally shorted something and popped that fuse, which could also mean that there may still be some damaged wiring on this engine harness. And just from moving it around um, and maybe replacing that sensor, maybe that fixed the main issue. Uh, however, uh, now I know that it runs good. And uh, however you get to the finish line, sometimes getting to the finish line is all that matters. Sounds pretty good. This is kind of a normal scenario for us. We get a lot of wrecked cars. We're used to seeing pinched wires, cut harnesses that we have to put back together. 
but unfortunately my experience with that is usually the first place you look you look for where wires have been smashed you start doing continuity tests you sometimes you look for fuses and in this case it would have saved me a whole lot of trouble but at the end it runs good it's an engine i can feel confident in i know that's a lot of work to go through just to take it back apart but now i know it's good plus i know the dme is good which is another expensive part on these cars the engine computers sell really well and i just feel good about selling stuff that i heard run uh, i know it's kind of an abnormal video for me uh, but you might see a little a few more of these on the channel i think i might do some more of these so anyway i hope you enjoyed this video if you'd like to buy parts off of this e-class or you need parts for anything else, you can go to importapart.com. You can also email us at importapartsales at gmail.com. And as always, I love all the comments, all the feedback, and even the criticism. I love it all, and I'll catch you on the next one.